The life of the first Chinese emperor who built the longest wall before Trump. Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. Today we're diving into the fascinating life of Qin Shi Huang, the first emperor of China. This powerful ruler wasn't just the first to unify the warring states of China, but also the mastermind behind the construction of the Great Wall, long before Donald Trump even dreamt about it. But King Shi Huang's story is more than just grand infrastructure projects. Did you know he believed he could cheat death by ingesting mercury pills? Join me as we uncover the secrets and controversies surrounding this legendary figure. Forget the unified China we know today. Back in 259 BCE, China was a land divided. This era, known as the Warring States period, saw seven kingdoms constantly battling it out for dominance. It was a brutal time, filled with constant warfare and political instability. Born into this chaos was a young boy named Ying Zhang. He wasn't born with the title of King Shi Huang, that would come much later. Ying Zhen's early life was shrouded in a bit of mystery, but we do know that his father, King Zhuan Zhang of Qing, was actually a hostage in another kingdom at the time of Ying Zhen's birth. Ying Zhen's childhood was far from ordinary. He became king of the Qing state at the tender age of 13. Can you imagine the pressure? Luckily, he wasn't completely alone. A powerful advisor named Lu Bo acted as a regent while Ying Zhen learned the ropes. He was a wealthy merchant from the Wei state, known for his shrewd business sense and keen understanding of human nature. Essentially, he ruled as a power behind the throne, guiding the young king and consolidating his own position. Lu Boy used his influence to promote policies that benefited the king's state and himself. Lu Boy's influence eventually waned. Some accounts suggested he was implicated in a failed power grab and was forced to step down as regent. Others claim he was simply pushed aside by the ambitious prime minister, Li Si. Li Si became Ying Zhen's right-hand man, helping him solidify his power and achieve his grand ambitions. Before Ying Zhen became the king, China was a land divided. Imagine seven kingdoms, Qin, Qi, Chu, Yan, Zhao, Wai, and Han all locked in a constant struggle for power. It was the Warring States period, a time of endless battles and shifting alliances. Ying Zhen, under the guidance of his advisors, saw an opportunity. He built a powerful and disciplined army, equipped with advanced weaponry and innovative tactics. These included using long swords, chariots with scythe blades, and even using psychological warfare to demoralize their enemies. Through a series of brilliant military campaigns, Ying Zhen conquered his rivals one by one. Key victories included the defeat of Zhao and the Battle of Shang Pin, and the capture of the powerful Chu state. With each victory, the Qin state grew stronger, swallowing up its neighbors. Finally, in the year 221 BCE, after years of relentless conquest, Ying Zhen achieved the unthinkable. He unified China under his rule for the first time in history. To celebrate this monumental accomplishment, he declared himself the Shi Huangdi, which translates to First Emperor. King Shi Huang, the name that would echo through the ages, was born. Now, Emperor King Shi Huang wasn't content with just conquering rivals. He wanted complete control. His goal? To create a centralized empire that would last for generations. One way he achieved this was through standardization. He unified laws across the empire, ensuring everyone followed the same rules. He even standardized things like currency, weights, and measures. Imagine the chaos if every city had its own money and measuring system. But standardization wasn't enough. King Shi Wang also wanted a strong central government. He created a bureaucracy, a network of officials who carried out his orders throughout the empire. This meant less power for local nobles and more control for the now. A unified empire needs good infrastructure. Qi Xing Huang initiated massive construction projects. He built a network of roads and canals that connected different regions, making trade and travel easier. This helped unify the empire, not just politically, but also economically. But perhaps his most famous project was the Great Wall. This massive wall stretching thousands of miles was built to protect the empire from nomadic invaders from the north. Building the Great Wall was a brutal undertaking, costing countless lives. However, it stood as a symbol of King Shi Huang's ambition and determination. We all know the Great Wall, a symbol of China's power and ambition. But why exactly was it built? The answer lies to the north. Nomadic tribes like the Xiongnu constantly raided China's borders, stealing livestock and disrupting trade. 
The Great Wall was King Shi Huang's solution. It was a giant, no entry sign stretching across thousands of miles. Building the Great Wall was a colossal undertaking. It wasn't just one wall, but a series of fortifications, watchtowers, and trenches all connected together. The scale was mind-boggling. To achieve this, King Shi Huang resorted to forced labor. Soldiers, peasants, even prisoners were all forced to contribute to this back-breaking work. They used basic materials like earth, wood, and stone, but the techniques were innovative for the time. The challenges were immense. The harsh weather, brutal working conditions, and lack of proper food and shelter led to a high death toll. Despite the immense cost in human lives, the Great Wall achieved its purpose. It provided a significant barrier against invaders, giving the empire a sense of security. The sheer length and strategic placement of the wall made it a formidable obstacle for any nomadic tribe. But the Great Wall was more than a defensive structure. It also served as a communication network, with watchtowers allowing messages to be relayed quickly across vast distances. The wall also facilitated trade with strategically placed gates controlling the flow of goods and people. Believe it or not, the Great Wall wasn't the only incredible discovery linked to King Shi Huan. Fast forward almost 2,200 years to 1974. Some farmers digging a well near Qian, China, stumbled upon something extraordinary, a life-sized terracotta warrior. It was not a single warrior. This was a vast army of life-sized terracotta warriors, horses and chariots, all meticulously crafted and buried with the emperor. It was like an entire army frozen in time, ready to protect King Shi Huang in the afterlife. The scale and detail of the terracotta army is truly astonishing. There are thousands of figures, each with unique facial expressions, hairstyles, and armor. The craftsmanship is incredible, a testament to the skill of the artisans who created them. This army wasn't just for show, it represented the power and might of King Shi Huang even in death. To learn more about this fascinating mystery surrounding the terracotta army, click the link in the video description below. King Shi Huang seemed to have it all, power, wealth, and a vast empire. But there was one thing he desperately craved, immortality. He was obsessed with the idea of cheating death. Legends say he surrounded himself with alchemists, searching for a mythical elixir of life. These alchemists concocted strange potions, often containing mercury, which they believed held the key to immortality. Little did they know, mercury was actually quite poisonous. In the year 2010 BCE, while on a tour of eastern China, King Shi Huang suddenly fell ill. Some historians believe he may have been poisoned by the very elixir he sought. The circumstances surrounding his death remain shrouded in secrecy. Officials, fearing a power struggle, kept the news quiet. King Shi Huang's body was embalmed and transported back to the capital in a heavy guarded caravan. They even went as far as to conceal his decaying body inside a carriage filled with fish to mask the smell. Back in the capital, a power struggle erupted. Li Si, the prime minister, manipulated the situation and forged a will to make King Shi Huang's younger, more pliable son the next emperor. This new emperor, known as King Er Shi, turned out to be a tyrant. His reign was marked by rebellions and unrest. The once powerful Qing dynasty created by King Shi Huang crumbled just a few years after his death. King Shi Huang's reign was short but impactful. He achieved the seemingly impossible, unifying China under one banner. This unified state, despite its brutal beginnings, laid the foundations for future Chinese dynasties that would last for millennia. Standard weights, measures, and writing systems promoted trade and communication within the empire, but there was a dark side to this unification. King Shi Huang ruthlessly suppressed dissent. He ordered the burning of books and the burying alive of scholars who dared to criticize him. This brutal cultural homogenization ensured control, but it also stifled creativity and intellectual debate. King Shi Huang remains a controversial figure. Some see him as a tyrant who crushed dissent and caused untold suffering. His quest for the mythical elixir of life and the construction of the terracotta army to guard him in the afterlife is seen as an expression of his megalomania. Others admire him as a visionary leader who had the foresight to unite a fragmented China and lay the groundwork for a powerful empire. Whether tyrant or visionary, there is no denying the lasting impact of King Shi Huang's reign. He left an indelible mark on Chinese history, leaving behind a legacy as complex and fascinating as the man himself. King Shi Huang's story is a fascinating glimpse into ancient China. It's a tale of ambition, brutality, and a relentless pursuit of immortality. He may be gone, but even today the terracotta army stands guard, a silent testament to the power of this enigmatic emperor.
Did he achieve immortality not through potions, but through the sheer scale of his achievements? There is a question for you to ponder. There are countless emperors' inventions and battles waiting to be explored. See you next time.